was sleeping in bed No more back to thinking Time for thinking ahead This is The Game of Life. Welcome to The Game of Life. I'm your host, Gail Nelson, President and CEO of Big Brothers Big Sisters of Miami, Season 1, Episode Number 10 on The Game of Life. And I'm very pleased to have with us today on our show that we're coming to you live, Facebook Live, Miss Michelle Shindell, Be Smart Lead from Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America. Michelle, welcome to the show. Thank you. Tell me about Moms Demand Action and how, uh, how it was formed. Well, Moms Demand Action started um, when a stay-at-home mom of five was in her house folding laundry, and she was listening to the news about Sandy Hook. And she was just devastated by the fact that six-year-olds could be shot in their school. And she got on Facebook and said, there has to be some group of, we need to have a march, we need to do something. And she had 75 Facebook friends at the time, and she was just trying to find a group to get together to, to try to do something about it. And she started Moms to Man Action for a gun sense. It's really just an uprising, really, of moms who said, oh, you know, we need to change things. Much like MAD, you know, yes. made a change with um, drunk, drunk driving. driving. And um, I think that that's what, what Moms to Man is, is doing. It's a, a bipartisan, non-political yes. um, group of not just moms, mostly moms, but there are, you know, we say it takes a real man to be a mom. <laughs> we have men. <laughs> we have men in our organization as well. But n- we are now, five years later, um, five million members strong uh, and we have a chapter in every state and and i'd like to emphasize that we're really not anti-gun we are pro gun safety that's all right and you know that's that's just like a mom yeah it's doing what's right uh and you mentioned it but i'll say it again for the record if you will uh, you know, Big Brothers and Big Sisters is a nonprofit organization, nonpartisan, but we're all about kids. We're mm-hmm. all about safety mm-hmm. in our community. And I got to say this, a shout out to DJI Re because where we are right now, this studio where this live broadcast is being taped is named after a mom. Mm. This is the Boogie Live studio here at Big Brothers Big Sisters and in partnership with the Irie Foundation. We have this platform to talk about a mom. And so Boogie was her nickname. And so it's all about just making beautiful music. It's about harmony. And so as we talk about safety, and as we talk about moms, and I'm the product of a single uh, a single mom raised me on her own. And so whenever moms speak, we need to listen. So and mm-hmm. shout out to my mom as well. <laughs> I call her Cubby. That's that's my heart. Let me just say this to you, Michelle. In light of recent events on uh, Tallahassee, Pittsburgh, Thousand Oaks, and even our own backyard. Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. What are some things people should be aware of? Uh, I think people need to be aware that these shootings, these mass shootings, are not unusual. They are a regularity. Mm. Um, And when I say mass shooting, I define that as um, a single incident where four or more people were shot, you know, at the same time in the same general area. Okay. So just to give you some perspective, we are now about 320 days into the year, and there have been 307 mass shootings uh, in this country. So um, Almost one a day. Yeah, it happens with regularity. So 96 people in the United States are killed every single day with a gun, and that isn't even to mention the hundreds that are injured. So I think my main point that I'd like to, to say that is that this trauma, um, let's take Parkland, for example. Yes. The trauma extends beyond the people that were killed. So it's not just the families. It's also um, the person who was maimed, who will not be able to feel their fingers, who um, can't walk. Um, So they're walking injured. And then not to even mention their psychological effect of them. So an entire community becomes traumatized by these, you know, mass shootings. Um, And... um, the other thing people don't realize is that in the United States, shootings are the second leading cause of death and number one for black children. Mm-hmm. It's just behind car accidents for the average child, but in the black community, it's the number one leading cause of death. And when, you, when that becomes normalized, and as we think about as big brothers, big sisters, 
you know, igniting potential, defending potential. But not only that, these kids don't need to be fixed. They need to be supported. They need to mm. be encouraged. And uh, certainly as, as a black man, uh, it's just alarming to think of kids growing up. I got four mm. beautiful kids, 2018, 12, and, well, 16 and 12, get it right. Uh, <laughs> it's, that's alarming. Yeah, um, the American Medical Association this summer declared it a public health crisis. A public health crisis. Yeah, they said the, the, the carnage, really, and it's carnage yes. on the daily is just all too common. From, you know, suicides. Is, are, suicides are about two thirds of, of the shooting deaths. Um, you know, there's a lot to be said about that, but, right. and then domestic violence and just being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Absolutely. You know, when I think about, just the society in which we live, Michelle. Gun violence seems to be such a polarizing topic. And why is it so polarizing when all of us want to keep our kids safe? Well, I, I think I'd say that gun, uh, gun um, reform and gun yes. safety is not a polarizing mm. or even intractable topic um, with the American public because 90% of Americans are in favor of common sense gun reform. So, for example, background checks on all gun sales, mm -hmm. you know, eliminating loopholes for that, um, making sure that people who have been convicted of domestic violence or who are under a domestic violence a restraining order uh, don't have access right. to guns. I mean, this is just common sense. Common sense. Uh, you know, a waiting period. Those are things that 90% of Americans uh, agree upon. And even 74% of NRA members. So when I say, like, mom's demand is sort of a counterbalance to what I call the radical NRA lobby. And I use those words with intention mm -hmm. because $350 million annual budget is supported almost in the majority by gun manufacturers. It's not your granddad's NRA, you know, the, the member who's out there hunting and who actually cares about gun safety. They're responsible gun owners. We're talking about a radical lobby. And so it's a political issue, mm -hmm. not a polarizing issue. That's so actually. well stated. Uh, it's, and I guess with a 24-hour news cycle and politics uh, every day, every second of the day, uh, it's important for people to just, uh, in the world of mentoring, it's about common sense. Right. It's about humanity. And I think about my grandfather growing up. I grew up in, uh, in Ohio, Toledo, Ohio, and would go out hunting. And it was... Safety, mm -hmm. safety, safety. Right. If you're going with me, safety in the home. We're going to talk about that later on. But you're exactly right. Common sense. And the vast majority of gun owners are responsible. Of you course. Know, but and we need, you know, we need to emphasize that it's not it's not an anti-gun thing. I think I think that also there's been a tipping point, probably because of Parkland and the mm -hmm. engagement with young people. There is a new wave of gun sense candidates that ran for office and won um, running on a pro-gun reform uh, platform, and that's really unusual. Right. And actually, Moms Demand had 16 nationwide who were former members and also gun survivor, gun violence survivors, right. who won, who uh, won their election bid this midterm. So, you know, there's a change in the air. We're here with Michelle Shindell, a Be Smart lead from Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America. Uh, you can call us, 305-631-2343. We're here on the Mentoring Podcast, The Game of Life, where everybody makes a team, but how you play is up to you. So give us a call if you want to join the conversation, 305-631-2343. And so, Michelle, I want to just talk about uh, how you got involved uh, with the organization and why is this so important to you? I just felt like something was broken. You know, when I hear the news, I just felt like um, th this epidemic is just, a, I needed to get off the sidelines. I needed to do something um, to try to change things. And honestly, you know, Moms Demand has different factors. They have legislative interests. They have uh, community engagement. And they have an education branch. And I, I used to teach fifth grade for eight years. I'm now, I'm an attorney. I've been an attorney for a long time. I work with incarcerated women for a, a nonprofit, but, but I see how this epidemic affects people and I just could no longer not do something. So I chose to be in the education part 
because it's immediate. Yes. It changes things. It's non-political. It's um, it's something we can do now. You know, and it changes conversation. I really believe in the power of conversation to change culture. And so, like we're having in this conversation now. Absolutely, and it's so. a, and the educational aspect as well. When I think about mentoring, you know, Big Brothers mm-hmm. Big Sisters is the oldest and largest youth mentoring organization in the United States. And as we think about uh, gun violence, gun safety, gun reform. It's like, why are you talking about that on a, on a podcast for mentoring? Well, here's my question. Why is mentoring so important, if you will, in preventing violence? Well, I have to say that you guys are, you know, on the right track because the Center for Disease Control says that mentoring uh, is one of the top strategies for reducing violence. So, like, just intuitively, I would say, you know, it just makes common sense, right? We're back to that, that if you have a positive influence on someone, if you're trying to teach them, how do you handle stress in a peaceful way, in a way um, that would affect change and, and not damage other people? If you're um, encouraging uh, confidence and healthy lifestyle, I mean, I don't have to tell you. I'm preaching to the choir no, here. No, preach on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we, you have a long history of promoting these kind of positive relationships, and we also know that when you're connected to a caring adult, communities just do better. And so I think that your very work um, is decreasing gun, gun violence. We have current funding from the Florida Department of Juvenile Justice to mentor children of incarcerated parents, breaking the cycle of delinquency. Mm. We have current funding from the Office of Juvenile Justice Delinquency Prevention to work with at and or high risk kids who have, some of whom may be high risk to enter the juvenile justice system, but some that even had a brush with the law. And so as we think about mentoring, and thank you for just stating the facts, because at the end of the day, mentoring is not just some feel good. Oh, that's nice. No, it's necessary. It's intervention yes. and prevention. Yes, it is. It's both, you know, and so I commend you for your long history of great work. Now, we have an incredible team, and not only just here in Miami, but throughout the nation. Big Brothers, Big Sisters of America, our, our national leader, Pam Iorio, our CEO, president and CEO nationally, we're committed to breaking the cycle, and it's with organizations like Moms Demand. Because if you're with moms and it's all about common sense, you're on the right side. And I'm not saying sides in terms of a polarizing uh, context. Uh, moms just get it. Uh, and as we think about parents, as we think about those mentors, we, what we call bigs, uh, the mentors, the trusted friend and counsel, if you will, Michelle, if you were to do a workshop uh, for big brothers, big sisters, or with big brothers, big sisters, uh, to educate bigs, those mentors who clearly have taken the time out to help a child, uh, and even parents as well. What would that look like, Michelle? Well, we have a pro- the education program that Moms Demand has. And, you know, the Brady um, Institute and also Gabby Gifford, they all have a similar program. But okay. our program is called Be Smart. And so SMART really is an acronym, right? So S is store your guns. Store your guns. Locked and unloaded. Okay. And M is model responsible behavior. A is ask before you send your children to someone's house? Do you have a gun and how is it stored? And R is recognizing the risk of teenage suicide if there's a gun present in the home. And then tell us, tell other people about, you know, the Be Smart program. But what I would do is um, we have a 20 minute presentation where we do a PowerPoint and we, you know, we help people feel more comfortable with those concepts, explaining more what they are, giving some data, but also having role playing about I think really one of the things that's the most difficult for people is asking. You know, I don't know why there's this judgment. They feel, you know, we're fine asking, do you have a dog? Right. Who's going to be in the house? What's your favorite football team? Right. (laughs) We ask a lot of questions about safety for our kids, you know. Do you have a pool fence if you have a pool? Lots of things we ask. That's right. But we're all uncomfortable asking, do you have a gun and how is it stored? Mm. Without feeling like we're judging or, you know, their judge. So we, we do role playing and that's what I would do if I so was So we can present. break down a lot of barriers and uh, dispel some myths as well. But we're talking about child safety. And again, I think about living in South Florida and people talk about, you know, kids, the necessity of them learning how to swim being mm-hmm. with so much water. And so with, with so many 
guns, if you will. So many. Common sense. I mean, the American Medical Association and the American Pediatric Association mm-hmm. estimate that if you send your child to someone's house, you have a, a one in three chance that they have an unlocked and loaded gun in the house. So it's not it's not just some abstract risk. It's a real risk in the United States that mm-hmm. someone is going to, your, your kids are going to be in a home with a unlocked gun. And I, I think I, I told you earlier that who is in most danger of unintentional gun deaths um, are three-year-olds. They, three-year-olds. They kill themselves, and they're more likely to kill themselves or uh, another person unintentionally because a gun is accessible and it's loaded. And then in terms of suicide, it's 13-year-olds. Yeah. That's sobering. Yeah. That is very sobering. So if we can remove access, you know, that, that's helpful. And, you know, we talk about gun locks. Yes. I talk, talk about, about that. you know, possibilities for gun locks. So, for example, these are called cable gun locks. They they go through like a bike bicycle right. lock and they go through the barrel um, and they ha- require a key. So you know, the data shows that having a gun in your home, it actually makes your family less safe. But a lot of people aren't convinced of that information. And mm-hmm. so, you know, um, they may not be comfortable with this kind of lock because it requires a key. So people who are not convinced of that, we recommend that, and we bring these to the presentations, um, a biometric uh, lock, which requires you to put your fingerprints down and you have immediate access to your gun. Or, you know, when you go to a, a house and there's a key lock where a punch pad with the numbers, right? you can do that. You do the code. The kids don't know. You know, and then you can have immediate access to your gun. So we talk about that. We also talk about how hiding a gun. <laughs> There's studies that show that uh, if you have a gun in your home and you think you've hidden it well, um, it's not no, the kids case. kids are just way too smart. <laughs> they know where your Christmas presents are I, hidden. You know, it's funny. You were, I was about to go there as <laughs> yeah. well. And obviously we talk about common sense and we talk about a very relevant and serious topic. But what's not funny is the fact that if adults think they're pulling the wool over the kids' eyes, right. they got another thing come. My, my mom every single year with all the Christmas gifts. I mean, same. I mean, she would move it around, but we. I mean, it took us only minutes. But yeah. imagine something as you know, fun is obviously Christmas gifts, but we're yeah. talking about something that can take a life. Right. And when you when the parent thinks they've hidden the the weapon. Right. It's not enough. I mean, enough. there's been studies mm. of like 300 kids, I think, in Alabama gun owning uh homes they ask the kids they ask, and they ask, they ask the kids do you know where your parents hide their gun yes and then it's more frightening is about 45 percent of those kids had actually taken the gun out and played with it wow. so well michelle the work you all are doing educating uh, not only educating but keeping us safe we have been directly have impacted obviously some of the uh, the children that are Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. Uh, we have mentors up there, our Brow- big brothers and sisters of Broward. Shout out to Anna Sedano and her incredible team. And they have bigs that are mentoring kids in Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. Mm. We lost a little brother years ago uh, to gun violence. Uh, and it was one of the most, in my job as uh, president and CEO, it's wonderful to see and give these kids high fives when they're matched. But when I had to go and speak at a funeral mm. for a little brother who lost his life, it's real. So this topic of gun safety and common sense, I commend the work that Moms Demand Action is doing. Uh, with, I welcome uh, the workshop to educate our bigs and our parents because it's all about common sense. So, Michelle, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for uh, having you me. Are, you all are always welcome because if we focus on common sense, if we just look in the mirror, we can do some great things for society and keep our kids safe. If anybody wants to know more about Please. Uh, you know, Be Smart, we have besmart.org uh, and besmartforkids.org and then Moms Demand Action for for Gun Sense also has a website. So you can Give see what we're doing. Give us that website address if you have it's, that um, handy. It's just Moms Demand Action, okay. um, you know, gunsense.org okay. or besmartforkids.org. And uh, if you want to know more about Moms Demand, you can text 64433 and the word READY. R-E-A-D-Y, or join, and you'll get text about what we're doing. And as Michelle said earlier, and thank you, Michelle, for uh, uh, dropping those CDC stats that shows that mentoring is one of the top mitigating forces uh, as it relates to preventing violence. And if anyone wants to be a big, uh, 
6445-644-0066 or www.bbbsmiami.org. Be a part of the solution. The cost of doing nothing is just far too high. Look in the mirror. We all can do something. We all can use some common sense. That's the Game of Life for today. We will see you next time. The Game of Life, where everybody makes the team, but how you play is up to you. I'm gonna make a change for once in my life.